we welcome back a classic home fixture of years gone by as we take on Leeds United. Traditionally, it's always been a fiery fixture with plenty of tackles, goals and talking points. So we'll be looking for more of the same as we go again in the Premier League's early kickoff on We're Not Really Here. Good morning, everyone. Yes, it is morning here in Manchester. I hope you're all well. You've all got up and had your breakfasts. I'm Natalie Pike, and I am joined on the sofa today, firstly by a man who knows all about scoring brilliant goals. It is Kevin Horlock, and also a man who wasn't shy of a tackle. It's Michael Brown. Now, before we have a good chat to the gents, it is, of course, time for the all-important team news and obviously with the Champions League games that have come last week and are coming up it is going to be interesting to see how many changes so we'll be getting that team news to you first any second but Michael are you thinking there's going to be quite a few changes? You would expect that wasn't it when we're talking about it what type of changes are going to be six or sevens being notably with Pep Guardiola um, over the last few weeks and you would expect that wouldn't you? Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, it, it, you, you've got to understand it. The players have to change. I know the supporters have been talking about they'd like to see the best team week in, week out. Always seeing the, the, the main players, we understand that. But you've got to balance all this loading that we've never seen before, Natalie. Yeah, absolutely. And that is it. We are bringing you the team news, the very first place to get the team news today. So do tell your friends you want team news first. You've got to be here on We're Not Really Here. We were literally counting down there to be able to give it you the second that we were allowed. And we are allowed right now. So this is your starting 11 for the game today against Leeds United. Now, apologies. I'm going to give you this in numerical order. This is um, what, I, what I have it in. And then together, we're going to piece together the formation. Um, starting in goal is, of course, Edison. And then we we have Kyle Walker, Ruben Diaz, Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, Amaric Laporte. Oh, no, apologies. No, please scrap me. I am reading out the team from Tuesday night. How appalling. We're going to start again. We have the team news here. So the team news is Edison, John Stones, Nathan Ake, Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, Alexander Zinchenko, Bernardo Silva, Ferran Torres, Benjamin Mendy, Fernandinho, who is captain, and João Cancelo. Now, moving on to the subs bench, it's Zach Stefan, Kyle Walker, Ruben Diaz, Ilke Gundogan, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, Riyad Mahrez, Phil Foden, and Eric Garcia. So that is your starting 11 and subs for today's game. So we make it that there is seven changes in the starting 11 there from the team that won the first leg of their quarterfinal of the Champions League midweek. So seven changes, Michael Brown. What's your instant thoughts on that team? Well, the instant thoughts, I mean, again, as we just discussed, so many changes. We don't know whether we're coming or going at times, with the amount of games that we're coming. So, so we've, got to, we've got to understand why Pep does that. The Dortmund game is so important. Yes, it's Premier League against Leeds United. What's interesting with the changes here, Nathan Ake coming back in, really think that's important. Looking forward to seeing him play at the back as well. Will it be Mendy? Will it be Cancelo? John Stones at the centre. Then in midfield is where it's slightly different, whether we're going to see Fernandinho at the base and Zinchenko playing one of those midfield roles with that left foot, having some balance. Bernardo Silva coming out again. Will we see Torres on the right-hand side high up? Raheem Sterling possibly on the left. And again, uh, Gabriel Jesus leading the line at number nine. I think it's full of energy this side, and we'd expect it to, to need that against this Leeds United side. I don't know what you think, Kev, but I think it's a, it's a, good, a good team against a high-energy Leeds side. Yeah, I, th I think we all expected changes. Um, I think the rotation in league games gone by is exactly what that is. I think this, this team today is picked on the midweek game coming up. Um, I fully expect six stroke seven of, of, of players that aren't starting today will start midweek. We are blessed, aren't we, that we have so many world-class players that making seven changes, um, you know, you're still looking at a team full of in incredible players. If we're going to start piecing together where we think the, the formation looks like today, Michael, first of all, start with me. What do you think the back four is today? That's what I've just tried to discuss there. Is, is, 
And it's hard to guess, isn't it, Pep Guardiola? We want to always say what he's doing, we always have a surprise. But looking likely, a Cancelo at fullback, John Stones, Nathan Ake, and Benjamin Mendy being that back four, I would think. Great. So we're thinking Zinchenko moving into the midfield. Um, give me your midfield. Well, the midfield, for <laughs> Fernandinho would be the, 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 the holding player. Um, and whether we see somebody go next to him, whether we see a more advanced one, we know Leeds United can match up and go um, man for man. They do that regularly. Uh, but in the midfield, it's, it's Zinchenko just in front of Fernandinho. Again, Bernardo Silva possibly a slightly different role than he did at Dortmund. And then the front three, as I've said, Zeus at the top of the pitch. Torres, an opportunity for him. Coming back in, we haven't seen him for a while. We've seen him leading the line, getting goals. So, yeah, just many, many options. And then Raheem Sterling. Left or right? Left or right. It's looking... We've seen Pep now, we bring, bring him in from the left-hand side, driving in with his right foot. And Torres likes that right-hand side. But could we see them switch? Yeah, of course we could. We could definitely I, see that. I, th I think that's the, the, the one that jumps out, that what Michael said. That, that's the obvious. Um, but with Pep, we know <laughs> that nothing's ever obvious. So we could see something totally different. Do you think that's got the balance, though, Kev? I, I think it, I, I think I think it makes it has, sense, doesn't it? I, I think it does, yeah. Obviously, um, Mendy bombing on down the left. Cancelo obviously loves to join in. Often see him popping up in central areas. So I, th I think that's probably what we're going to see. But look, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Yeah, I always say I enjoy the first five, ten minutes of the game, working out who's playing, <laughs> playing where. It's, it's part of the enjoyment of it. Obviously, Alexander Sinchenko as well. We, we think he's going to be playing midfield. We forget, I think, that, that he came to us as a midfielder. And as we were talking before, he plays at the number 10 position, you were saying, Kev, for, for Ukraine. So, um, it's a chance for him to play back in the midfield. It's going to be, you know, it's a good opportunity for him. I think he, that if you asked him what his favourite position would be, it would probably be something like where he's playing today. So it's an opportunity for him. We've seen him adapt, haven't we? Going to that left-back position, yes, at times, defensively, you would sort of say it's a bit difficult for him, but how he's managed to, to come forward, and we know how the, 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 the sort of the full-back will go and drift into midfield, so that suits him as well. So many options, but it's, it's hard to tell. And just, just listen to Pep in the interview saying he's watched 20 hours of Leeds United. That's the respect he's got for them. I absolutely loved it when I heard him say that. That is a man that is obsessed with football. Um, I'm also loving we can see Zinchenko on screen now doing his regular thing where he likes to feed the security dogs. I love a man that loves dogs. I, I feel like I'm going to go and find those security men and find out what treats Zinchenko brings for the dogs because that is obviously what we want to know on this programme. But actually what we really want to know is the thoughts of our manager Pep Guardiola and we can hear from him now. Pep, a lot of people excited to see this contest today. What sort of game are you anticipating? Tough. I think not any Premier League uh, team, when face leads, I uh, think it will be a comfortable game. So the way they approach, the way they played. Um, but yeah, ready to, to play and to play good against them. Seven changes from midweek. You're making full use of your squad. Nathan Ake returns. I think it's his first last played on Boxing Day, so you must be delighted to have him back and a some lot. other players as well. A lot, a lot. Uh, he was injured a long time. He's trained the last three weeks or month, and he's uh, yeah. When the most pleased uh, I am as a manager it was that give minutes to the nice people, a nice person like uh, help the team. In a good moments when he played, or in a bad moments he doesn't play, no, he's ready for them. He's incredible beloved uh, for uh, for old mates, and I'm happy he can play. And Raheem Sterling is only his second start in City's last seven games, so he's got a chance to get back at a regular place or as, as regular as he can in this squad. But what are you looking for him to deliver? Why is he been himself? Out of the side? He's himself. So he's important player for us. Have been everything would we achieved in these last years. Impossible to think without him. Uh, and in the last games, Bernard, Bernard, Riyad and Phil, they were standing and they they, they played. You mentioned in midweek a, a couple of injuries in the squad. Sergio, one of them today? It's not, it's her niggles. Has a big problem. Uh, the last three, four days could not train. Uh, Laporte is, uh, yesterday didn't feel good. Something here and something problems in the, in the hips. And uh, they were not... The doctor said uh, they are not ready. Understood. You, you're up against the man you said was the person you admire the most in world football today. That's a fabulous compliment to Marcelo Bielsa. What would you highlight? What quality would you pick out? 
honesty. Uh, don't say anything for the gallery, for the media, to make himself more brilliant or more nicer or more, uh, I don't know. Uh, his team always is always he thinks for the spectators. Uh, it doesn't matter who plays with the fourth division against the champions for the. He has to go to play in Allianz Arena against Bayern Munich and he's going to play full gas to try to win the game. And I think it's a present, it's a joy for uh, for all the people who lost football. So, and um, and especially because he helps me a lot in uh, when I not even start. And even in bad moments in my career, he was there, give me advices. So that's why I appreciate him a lot. And uh, his success is my, is uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm happy for the, for them, for him. Well said, Pep. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. I love that. Pep Guardiola loves Bielsa like we love Pep Guardiola. They obviously have so much of a fond affection for each other, and you've heard it throughout the, the press conferences and interviews on the build-up to this game today. Um, Kev, Pep really seems to see Bielsa as you know a, as a man that he really admires and adores, and it's lovely, isn't it, to see him talk it, about it? It's it. incredible to listen to, actually. That, that's such high praise coming from someone like Pep, so... He's obviously good. He's obviously good. I, I'm, I'm for one that you mentioned at the top of the show. I'm loving seeing Leeds back. Um, it's a fantastic football club, big football club with lots of tradition. It's a little bit similar to City in terms of they had tough, tough years, but they're back and, and it's, it's good for the Premier League to see them back. And obviously Pep said it, they've got a manager there that can, can keep them progressing and developing. Yeah, he's su he's such a character as well, and so well respected th throughout football. Pep actually, well, Bielsa actually said about Pep this week that Pep was magical. And then you see in Pep's press conference, he got a bit overwhelmed, saying like, "I ca I can't believe he's saying that about me." And us as fans, we're like, "Wow, Pep gets overwhelmed with compliments too." <laughs> Yeah, we don't often see that, do we, with Pep? And especially uh, against an opponent, he actually stays quite safe. He actually sort of says, oh, we respect his team, they do a good job, but now we talk about our team and what we're going to do. He has got a really special place, hasn't he, for Marcelo Bielsa. He appreciates what he'd done for him early on in his career. And he has, he's got something different, Bielsa. Speaking to the Leeds United people when he first come in, what he changed all around the training ground, the work ethic, the detail... There's been that little bit of drama with Spygate and, and everything regarding Leeds United. But he's come and he's took the Premier League, hasn't he? The first day, Liverpool, they were attacking, want to score goals. And he has admiration for him. And what he said is, he does it for the supporters, he does it for entertainment. And let's be fair, this is a Leeds United side who really, a lot of people would say, we all hate Leeds. And that was what Leeds United thought. And I think the perception this year is the neutral have wanted to watch Leeds United go and play, and it's been exciting. So Bielsa v Pep today, with different formations, different tactical things, exciting. Yeah, Pep alluded to it, didn't it, that they are exciting to watch. Um, there's normally goals, so hopefully I've not put the dampers on that, and it's going to be a nil-nil <laughs> now. But um, they, they come and do their stuff. They're, they're high energy, they're attacking numbers, they're defending numbers, and it's something that, that Manchester City don't normally get. Um, normally teams come here and sit deep and, and really hard to break down. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a real open game and um, it's going to be a game of chess between the two managers. Do you, reckon, do you reckon Pep's got many people like he has that regard for? Do you know, like coaching management? Yes, he's got rivals next to him, hasn't he? But that he actually sees as like I, I think there'll be managers, managers that he respects. I think all top managers have that respect from for other managers that are doing a job in a, in a real difficult environment. But um, obviously he's the godfather. Um, to Pep, you can see that in just in the interview alone. Yeah, I loved watching his, his interview talking about it. It was so nice to see him, you know, see Pep in that light that we don't often see. But I totally agree with you, Kev. I think we're all expecting this to be a really attacking, exciting game. So hopefully we're not going to jinx it. But like you say, generally we are used to teams coming here and defending, you know, defending, defending and hoping to maybe get a chance that they, they can take. It would be surprising if Leeds suddenly started playing that way because that's, that's generally not the way they play. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, it's a dangerous game to play in all honesty, if you do come out at Manchester City and they've got the players to expose you in the pockets and, and create chances, but it, it could be, be a flowing game end to end uh, and we'll see what we get because we, we don't, like we said, we don't often see teams come and open up and attack in, in big numbers, um, so they could create chances themselves, so it should make for an entertaining game to watch. 
And we're seeing the Leeds team arriving at the stadium now. We can give you the, the Leeds starting 11 in a second as well. Um, and we'll, of course, get, get the, the gents' opinion on it. And, of course, I haven't mentioned as yet as well that Michael obviously used to play for Leeds as well. So um, you've got a bit of an affinity for them. I have. It was great. Really enjoyed my football. And as I say, the supporters... When it, you know, they, they had had the problems, not back to the Premier League for such a long time, so they had the disappointments. Oh, I, I think but that's the link with Manchester City. Yeah, they've had tough times, but the support was always there. They've stuck by the club in big numbers, by the way, like Manchester City fans have. So um, there's that that link that's quite special. Yeah, definitely. And of course, we have that link between the clubs of a certain dislike of another club as well, <laughs> which um, certainly gives which us one's a, that, a nice connection. That? Yeah, I can't, can't think. <laughs> right, let's have a look now at this Leeds starting 11. So, in goal is Melier. And then you have Alioski, Cooper, Lorente, Aileen, Phillips, Dallas, Rafina, Roberts, Costa. And, of course, Patrick Bamford. Now, we do just want to mention straight away, um, as, as we were talking as well, Michael, that, of course, Jack Harrison isn't playing. He is, of course, um, we are his parent club, and as part of that loan deal, he is not allowed to play in, in today's game. Um, and Bielsa did say in his, in his pre-match um, interviews that that's a blow for them because he's been a huge player for them this year. And I must say, for the City supporters who've not seen Jack Harrison, he's improved, I've seen him in the Championship, and then he's took to the Premier League. He's been excellent at times. What he delivers as an outlet down the left-hand side, and hopefully his career can progress, keep getting better under Bielsa, that obviously Pep knows well. And can he come and join Manchester City squad? Will he do enough in the summer you know, to, to, to be around it? Can he come and, and play a part in Manchester City? He's getting better and better all the time. I really must say that. And he will be a miss for Leeds United. So, thankfully, he's not playing for Manchester City today. We understand it. But this is a Leeds side, um, Natalie, who have full of energy that we keep talking about. The surprise. They don't do things like everybody else. They'll, they'll, they'll go man-to-man, -man, as I said. They'll end up with a back three at times. They'll all run forward. Great energy in the middle of the park. And one to watch for me is Rafinha. He's a special player I've enjoyed watching over the last few months. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for me as well, of course, Patrick Bamford jumps out. Another link with us, of course. Um, he has had a phenomenal season this year, Kev. He has. There's no question about it. And, and, and fair play to him. He must be really mentally strong because question marks were raised. Can he do it in the Premier League? Will he, will he still stay at Leeds? Will he drop back down to the Championship? I think he's took that all on board and answered all, all critics. He's, he's been sensational at times and scored some really good goals. And obviously they've got the lad Dallas there in his twilight years. The old man amongst the group. Um, unbelievable professional. Um, and fair play to him to still perform at this level. Kev, he's going really well, and he can play everywhere, Stuart Dallas. He's one of those in the team that they really, really like, left back, right back, centre midfield. I interviewed him actually a couple, a couple of weeks ago, and he, he was really on good form. And you could see he's just, he, he's pinching himself how much he's enjoying his football, and they seem to have a good team spirit down there. But going back to Patrick Bamford, he was questioned all last season in the Championship. He scored 14 goals in the Premier League. It just tells you what he's tell. doing. And he's on the fringe of the international call-up as well. Yeah, I heard them in, before the, the last um, England call-up. His name was starting to get banded about. I mean, that's got to be great for his confidence. I think it has to, doesn't it? Like, if, if, if you're doing the business, scoring goals, <laughs> I think times have gone where, where you had to play for, for, for one of the big clubs. Um, if you're English and scoring goals, you should be mentioned. There's, there's no question about that. I think that's the right way to go. And, and I think um, Gareth Southgate's gone along that mould where he's, he's not afraid to, to bring their names into the hat. He's not afraid to use young players. So it's refreshing in that respect. You just need a bit of luck. What, he, what he's not is all of the people are all fit. That yeah. is up against it. The one time he probably could have got a call-up was now. Uh, but he's going well. He's very educated, very knowledgeable down to earth and a, a sensible player and he relies on him a lot it's, a, it's an exciting lead side but I must say Manchester City side is exciting and you know they're going to be thinking well we'll go and have a go but if City perform then you would expect City to win yeah, and it is great. Leeds, it's great to see, I, th I think, Leeds back in the Premiership. Premier League, even if it is because of that, that link there, Kevin, that we both yeah. dislike the same team. Obviously, as a, a gentleman that has played previously for Leeds, what do you think it is um, in terms of, from, from their side, playing against us? Because obviously they have that big passion for playing against United. Is there anything similar for them when they come to us, do you think? I think, like you're saying, both have a, a particular rivalry with Manchester United, for sure. Um, I think they, they appreciate as supporters what Manchester City's 
supporters have been through, similar clubs, similar things that have happened to them. They're getting themselves in a much better place than they were. Leeds United under ownership, Ken Bates scenario when I joined, and then there was a bit of uncertainty with different owners and a bit of financial problems, which created uncertainty for Leeds United um, supporters. But I remember coming here for Leeds United in the FA Cup, um, and it was a chance that it was such a big game for, for Leeds United because they've not tasted anything like it. We've beaten Spurs, um, a former side. And for me, it was my last opportunity to come and play at the Etihad and just showed you the amount of supporters that they brought that day. I mean, it, it, it was a huge amount and it was comfortable to Man City, but it just told you they wanted a taste of it. They wanted to be back and, and they really enjoy it. I've got a lot of Leeds United um, who fans who are friends of mine, and they're, they're just itching to get back in the stadium. And for all times... We... Talking talk of the stadium, it's not changed much. I went there recently, last year, I think it was. Ellen Road's not... It's like being in a time war. Me being old-fashioned, um, I loved it. I loved going back there and looking around thinking, God, this, I remember it, it like this when I played there. Nothing's really changed. There's probably been a little upgrades here and there, but not the, the vast changes that you see at a lot of the top clubs now. Is it like to play in as a stadium, or is it like to play in as a stadium still? Do you think? It, it, look, with a full house, it was daunting. It, it was a tough place to go. They were very vocal. Um, I've had a few tough days there, I must admit. And the fans, like you said, Michael, they'll be absolutely gutted. They've got back into the Premier League and they've not been able to get to to any games. And that probably they're probably one of those teams. I imagine a home crowd really helps them. For sure. Um, do you know now that they're going well, it's helped them. When it, when, when it was uncertain times and times when I was there, it didn't always help because they got frustrated. There was a little bit of groaning, etc. So now they're in a great place. And um, that was great to see one of the, the Giants back in the Premier League. Yes, absolutely. Although, of course, not, 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 not today. Not today. <laughs> now, we are going to hear ahead of the game. He's making a start today. It is Ferran Torres. Ferran, you've had to be patient. You've been waiting for your chance today. It's only your second start in nine games. Bueno, es verdad que no he empezado a titular desde hace mucho tiempo, pero bueno, yo estoy preparado, estoy entrenando bien para tener esta oportunidad cada, cada vez. Y bueno, eh, muy contento por empezar hoy y espero que podamos conseguir los tres puntos. Y yeah, obviamente, no he sido un starter en un tiempo, pero estoy siempre listo, estoy siempre trabajando, intentando ser listo cuando tengo la chance y intentando contribuir al equipo. Y eso es lo que voy a intentar hacer ahora y ayudar al equipo a ganar los tres puntos. Una cosa que puedes decir sobre tus oponentes hoy es que nunca se van a dar. Va a ser un test. ¿Qué tipo de juego estás esperando? ¿Fast tempo? Bueno, eh, cada partido es, sabemos que es un examen para, para todos, pero bueno, nosotros tenemos que hacer nuestro juego, jugar a lo que sabemos y, y cada vez intentar conseguir los tres puntos para estar más cerca del objetivo. Sí, yeah, every game for us is a test, uh, but we know we need to focus on ourselves, try to play our game, our style, and if we do that, uh, we will be closer to get the three points. Does the draw back in October, which was a very close game, a very frantic game, does that give Ferran a sense of what it's going to be like today? El empate del, de la primera vuelta 1 a 1 puede ser un, un reflejo de lo que puede ser el partido también. Bueno, sabemos cómo juegan ellos, sabemos el entrenador que, que tienen, que les gusta mucho competir y, y jugar hombre a hombre, pero bueno, nosotros dependemos de nosotros para, para eso, para conseguir la victoria y, y estar más cerca del objetivo, como he dicho antes. Sí, yeah, we know them very well, we know the manager they have, they love the football style, they, they, they like to compete, so we need to be ready for that, but I think if we, if we do our game, we can win the three points. Well, thanks very much. Thank you, Ferran. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. So that was the thoughts of uh, Ferran Torres ahead of the game, getting a start today. And you'll notice that he was in his big city puffer jacket there. Now, the reason for that is that we are actually getting some snow here in Manchester right now. So for all our wonderful fans around the world, this is April in Manchester. That is snow that you are seeing. Kind of sludgy, rainy Manchester snow, but that is snow. The weather here currently is crazy. So we are getting snow in April in Manchester. So we are not jealous at all of our fans all around the world who've probably got glorious sunshine just now. How does that, randomly, it's just coming to me head, while I've got two professional players here, I'd like to know, how does a, a weather, this changing weather, affect the build-up, affect the way that you're going to play? Is the pitch going to be kind of a, a bit slippier, a bit a quicker, or am I just way well, overthinking it? Do you know what? I think I said it on the previous programme. I loved it when it was raining or snowy because it made it slipperier and I could slide quicker than I could run. So I, I, I like this weather. I didn't mind it because I could slide into tackles and get there quicker than running there because I was so <laughs> slow. So um, it, I was all about this weather. 
No, I'd like, I'd always like the pitch wet, but I didn't like it freezing cold and snow, and it did change a few outcomes. You can't do that anymore. If you slide now and go off your feet, you, you're endangering yeah, an opponent, you've got to be so careful. So, listen, these, it, it ain't that bad. It looks worse than what it is. I think it's not too cold, and they'll be fine with it. But, listen, there is at times when you have got to adapt, you've got to change slightly, but these, these pitches now, how they drain, how they are, incredible. Were you, um, were you glove wearers? Did you wear gloves no. in this sort of weather? How dare you? How, no, yeah. never. I should have known. I, I, yeah. I mean, my boggles. I was always a long sleeve wearer, but that wasn't because I was cold. I just preferred having my arms covered. I can't get my head round players that wear short sleeves and then wear gloves. It's just all a bit <laughs> bizarre for me. But I did in the warm ups. In the warm ups, I had everything on. Literally the whole hat, gloves, tracksuit, the, the whole thing. But then once the game started, that was it. Oh, we can see. There we go now. Training shots um, with snoods, gloves. Tracksuit tops, the full work. So you're not you're not alone there, Michael. And also, of course, coming out there as well, um, the team to get ready for this warm up for the game against Leeds United. Half past twelve kick off today. And as we said, there were seven changes from the team that started midweek. One of those changes is Kevin De Bruyne, who is on the bench today. Now we had some absolutely amazing news this week. It popped up on my phone as I did. I imagine it did for so many of you with that alert that I get from Manchester City. I love those alerts, by the way. Um, and it popped up. Kevin De Bruyne signs a new deal. And I did a little dance in my house. Absolutely ecstatic that he has signed a contract until 2025. Now, we did have two years left of his existing deal, but he is committed to that extension, which will take him basically for the rest of his top level career, 10 years with Manchester City and I bet you were all as absolutely thrilled as I was when I read that. Now some of the points that I you know love about this of course the fact that 10 years with us you know it, I think it's a real statement as well when you're talking to other world-class players when you're signing you know other contracts with your players to have arguably one of the world's best players commit 10 years of his life to a club that is a phenomenal sign. It is and I think that's the point is Kevin De Bruyne signing is it makes everybody else stand up and look. He's an incredible player, what he brings. He's leading in many, many ways around the dressing room, on the pitch. We know what he brings. And from, you know, if I'm looking out and saying, well, do I want to stay at the football club? Do I want to come in? He sets a standard. It's great news for Manchester City, for me as well. i just like to know, can you show us the dance that you did when you found out the news? <laughs> I was sat in my chair, and I, I was pretty much like this, because it's just brilliant news. You must have done a little jig when you, no, when you it was, heard it as it's well. It's brilliant, isn't it? Because I, it's almost embarrassing. I, when, I keep doing, when I'm doing the commentary for the games or sitting in here, and it, it, I just keep saying good things about it. I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed to say that good things about it. He's yeah, amazing he's, he's player. incredible. He's incredible, and it's a, it is a massive statement. A, a number of players are, are secured for the future. Um, when, when owners come in, um, question marks go, oh, is it going to be for the longevity? I think they, they've proven they're here for the long haul and, and already thinking about the future. So, so that signature is massive, massive. Yeah, that's a great point, Kev, as well, because we've got players that are now signed until 2025. Edison, Laporte, Ake, Diaz, Kevin De Bruyne, Cancelo, Torres and Bernardo Silva, all signed us so eight of our real core of the team all signed there until 2025 yeah. that's phenomenal unbelievable for the future unbelievable for manchester city fans um and it's it's a massive statement for me obviously footballers these days are, are, are rich beyond belief so it's not all about earning the biggest money um, although they get paid well obviously and rightly so they want to be at this football club and the reason being it's run properly the facilities are unbelievable they, they've got um, an owner that wants to back it and push it forward and always develop and they've got the top manager it's I think simple. the C I think the, the also as well is that the C the, the C are a route to trophies because that's what they're about, and, and you know these players, that, that's generally what they're all about. Their contract's sorted, they get on with it, but they sort of go, where's the Champions League, where's the Premier League, I want to win, I want to set a legacy, and, and he leads that the way, no, no doubt. And I also love the fact that um, I read that Kevin De Bruyne was, he just negotiated his own contract, he just got on with it with City, and I just think that, to me, that shows that he must have an incredible relationship with great the Great trust, great, great relationship, trust. and he, he wants to stay, doesn't he? That's, he wants to be at the football club, how can we get it done? Brilliant. 
Now, our man, Jolian Lescott, of course, who's a regular on We're Not Really Here, who we all absolutely adore, he was lucky enough to catch up this week with Kevin De Bruyne right after he signed his new contract. We've got a little clip here, but to get the full interview, and it's well worth it, because you know from watching this show that Jolian is hilarious, and you can get that on the City podcast. But here is a little clip for you now. Was it, was it important for you to, to do it before the Euros and the final stages of the season? Well, I think uh, it was better to do it now as soon as possible. I didn't want to keep it hanging and I don't think the club want to do it either, you know, with everything that is at stake. You know, there's no distractions uh, now for, for both of us. Not that there, there was any for me anyway, but uh, it, it helps, you know, I think everything is settled at my part now so it, it's easy yeah that makes sense and then in regards to you not having no distractions in terms of other clubs was it a key factor that your family are settled in manchester as well because having played and well, I obviously know... it, it's really important uh, you know I'm, I'm, i don't have to think only about myself i have to think about my wife and my three kids and uh We've been really happy here in Manchester. Uh, my kids are born here, so they're basically half Manx. Yeah, Manx, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but they're really happy. And, you know, uh, the feeling that I had with the club and when everything is so positive, so that there was no even a thought of about switching teams. So it was fairly easy for my part. Absolutely love that. And you can get the full interview on the City podcast there between Jolien and Kevin De Bruyne. And I bet you're all also thrilled to hear that Kevin De Bruyne's kids were born in Manchester. That put a massive smile on my face. So I think we have claim to Kevin De Bruyne's kids now as proper Manx, which is great news for us all in the future, hopefully. But Michael, um, how important is it? I think Jolien asks a really important question there, especially for, for players that are coming to this country, that their families are settled. Was that an important aspect for you in your playing career? It is. Everywhere you go, wherever the location be. Obviously, I didn't do international, but when you go to move to Portsmouth, when your family are in Manchester, it's difficult because you're away. The demands now, the players are, are out almost every day training, lots of overnights, internationals. They've got to be settled. And I think you look back a few years ago, especially Manchester City, other clubs did it as well. They put so much in place regards to liaison officers, schooling, housing. The support strategy behind it is incredible. And I think that's what you've got to understand. If something happens, they've got a number to pick up. And then over time, you get to know. But they've got it from the start. They've got a list. They tell you these are what you are for all your players. They're looked after incredibly well. And that makes a huge difference. And, and, and at that point, I think City have nailed it to make it comfortable. But they've got to like many factors. Their, their, their wife, their, their girlfriends, their families, other strains. Sometimes you can't control that. But ultimately, Kevin De Bruyne has got that under control. He enjoys being around it, and so do many other City it, players. It is massive. I, I moved to Manchester City with two really young children um, from down in Swindon, and it was, it was a big factor. Um, you're moving away from family, no real support network in, in that respect. So it is vital, and it's lovely to hear him say, we've got so much in common, me and can we share the same name? I actually did my own deal as well with Manchester City, believe it or not. Which it was, was a similar, bit, wasn't it? It was a little bit different. Mine was for a pack <laughs> of pork scratchings. These were for a bit more than me. Just but, the one pack, yeah? No, two, two. I was, I was, it's I, just I was in demand. It's important that, demand. that everyone's friendly, isn't it? It is. Just like you, for instance, when I needed a car to borrow, Oh, yeah, you, you smashed just, that car up, you, didn't you? You, you borrowed All right, me hold a on. car. We need this story. Wait a minute. What happened? Yeah, I had, obviously, I had a young family, so I had um, one of these people carriers, and I think Michael and his mates were going out somewhere for a weekend away. Obviously, yeah, look, take my car if you want. I think you come back bat battered up, and, and <laughs> he needed a bit of body work to the car, let's just say that. No, what I did is I drove out of his house and got to the roundabout, and my, my, my other, I had a car, which, but we needed this other one, and as I pulled up the roundabout, I've bumped into the back of my own car, driving his car. But it's what about? It's made yeah, me friendly. He come to the area, and I said, "Come on, I'll come round for a <laughs> cup of tea." Can you write? It's important relationships. And on with on the top players. of all that, we talk about the, the children and 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 the wives and girlfriends business. Manchester is a lovely place, barring the weather, like we've seen today. It's a lovely place, and the big thing for me and my family when we moved here, I just think Manchester people are so friendly. They're, they're different. They're different to what I was used to in London and in other parts of the country. They're just so friendly and welcoming. So all them factors contribute, and obviously we, we sit and look today. If you're coming to Manchester to join Manchester City, you're joining the biggest club in the world for me.
Yeah, and, and Kev's um, arrived today and immediately said, what's going on with this weather? Because well, I was sat in the garden <laughs> down south. I live down south now, so I was sat in the garden yesterday. I had to borrow a coat to come here today so I don't get frostbite. What is going on? But we can put up with that. We can put up with it's that. It's not that, yes. Kel. It's not that much different. It's a little bit. You southerners. Southern softy, you know, yeah. southern softy. <laughs> um, you, of course, moved around a lot in your career as well. You played for Tottenham for a while. Yep. So um, how difficult it is, I think often we might forget, how difficult it is as, as a player when your family gets settled somewhere, so say your kids might be in school in Manchester, yep. and then suddenly you, your job takes you to London. Well, it is difficult, and uh, at that point you have a choice. Do you leave them where they are? Can you travel from that club? Are you comfortable with travelling? Some of the players don't want to do that, and the demands at the top level don't let you travel. They say you have to be near the training ground, you can't travel for too long. And it's just a, a nice balance all around and an understanding that your family are comfortable. It makes such a, a, a difference. And schooling-wise, young family have seen Kevin De Bruyne in and around where, where they all live. Lots of the players live out of town. Some decide to, to with, without the families, live in the city. And they're all looked after. And as I say, they have a great team spirit at the football club. Great, great backing, great team around them. And... And it, does now have, we're it, it does have a knock-on effect, and it is, it's probably one regret I've got in my career where I was lucky enough to be at this wonderful football club for, for a fairly long time. But after that, I moved about quite a bit towards the end of my career, and it's difficult for the kids, you know. They, they, they changed school. We always moved, and it, it just worked out that way. The clubs were never near each other when I moved, and it does have a knock-on effect because they, they tend, the children tend to grow up and then not have a real close network of friends um, so that is one regret but but Kevin's got his spawn what will that take him to 10 years in Manchester they the kids were born in Manchester they'll have a network of friends so um, fair play to him yes Kevin De Bruyne is mank kids that is the breaking news on we're not really here today and it's important important we have a, a good settled Kevin De Bruyne who has extended his contract till 2025 of course we're playing Leeds United today is the 12.30 kickoff in the Premier League now it's been a little while since we played Leeds United in the Premier League um, but one of the years when we did back in 2003 you were playing do Was you I? instantly <laughs> remember this game um, do you want me to tell truth or lie yes. tell truth no no, I think I remember the goal that, that hopefully we're going to show because it was some some goal, but I don't remember too many games, to be Generally, honest. I, I need the goals to remind me of the games, yeah, so you might I, get a, a one here. Do you know what? I might be a negative person, but I tend to, to remember the games that I've done really poorly and, and it's been tough games rather than games that we've won. So we're getting to see some of the goals now and some of the chances here. I think that might have been me crossing yeah, it. Was, it was a great cross, yeah. that, Kev, wasn't see, it? See the way I was that. trying to get round it so it weren't on my right? <laughs> You'd normally say you were right, yeah. Yeah, I was dancing around that to get it on my left. Yeah, and I think that's Mark Vivian Ferre there as well that we were seeing in, in, in the shot there as well. So, um, yeah, another great chance there. So we are, in a minute, going to see a goal You're just from... just got to hit the Sean. target. I did, I, I, I did, target. No, I did, mate. You tipped it over. Hit the target, No, I did, Kev. I did, I did, no, Brian. Robo, that's going top bin, mate. Robbo was yeah. just diving. Yeah. I know he's missed it. He's put his hands. Could have put his cap on it, I think. Kev, how did we not recognise... Instantly recognise that that was you? <laughs> And there he oh, is. Oh, there's the goat. There's the goat. Now, I wish the, if the goat was here now, he'd be able to say to you, Kev, see, I don't shin them all. Yeah, yeah. Look, that I was got, a cross. I, 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 give, I, give the goat, <laughs> I give the goat a bit of stick. He, he was an unbelievable person. He was an unbelievable goal scorer for Manchester City. And, and it was a massive factor to where this club is now. He, he didn't have it easy um, early on. He wasn't scoring goals freely, but he stuck with it and, and he got his reward. He scored so many goals. And that was one of the cleanest ones I've ever seen, actually. He's actually kicked that nearly properly. Yeah. <laughs> didn't he? Didn't... Is that Ayo Berkovic? Yeah, that's a great pass. Yeah. Well, I see that little reverse pass. Brilliant. This is the goal. Is that Nicholas and Elka? Nicholas yeah. and Elka, yeah. I'm loving it. There's so many memories Certain of Danny Mills back. there trying to defend as well. What a finish. Do you know what? Wow. Yeah, uh, look, Nicholas had that in the locker. He, 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 technically, he was unbelievable. Quite a quiet lad. He was um, quiet, Unassuming. But, I don't know, being a lefty myself, I just watched that finish. And, and for whatever reason, it just looks better when it's a lefty. I don't know why. I don't know why, whether it's because we're used to seeing a righty do it more often. It just looks a thing of beauty. Great connection, timing, oh, swerve. Wow. That's some goal, that. Some goal. That angle really showed you, well, that connection. I have to admit, I don't massively remember Nicholas Jensen. And that was like my proper era of going home and away. No, he was a good mm. footballer. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was a great player. I, I've yeah. got to admit, though, I'm looking at the goal. Once I'd seen it once, I couldn't help but look in the distance. A full Kipax. Did you see the Kipax then? Oh, oh I missed that place. 
the oh, Kipax. The huh? Kipax. Oh yeah, you guys were so so lucky yeah. to, to to have got to play in front of them. Well, I don't know. At, at, at times it was unlucky because it wasn't great times. <laughs> um, so we did get a little bit of stick, and rightly so. But yeah, main road. It's a great a real, finish, that. Look real that. special part. In my career, I love playing there. That's it was goal. a special place, wasn't it, to yeah. play the Kipax? I, I, can't, I just can't explain it. Here, stand up when you when you, you run out of main road. And maybe it's me being getting old and being nostalgic. I, I miss He was I a miss player as well, wasn't he, Kev? I think Harry I swapped shirts with him this game, actually. Did you? Have you still got it? I think he asked me, though. Because we beat them, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely will have asked you. I had in, at this end that you're seeing here. This is where my season ticket was back then. So I used to sit about three quarters of the way back up in the north stand there. Um, and like I say, this was my era at home and away. So this brings back. I think I remember this game really clearly. Now we're starting to to see some of the goals as well. And it's one of the great goals at Maymo that. Without, without shadow, it was the, the the technical ability, the the flighted cross, keeping his eye on it because he he had a little bit longer than than sometimes you do if a ball fires across it. Yeah, but he's kept his eye on it. Technically, it was perfect. And of course, the first goal scored by the wonderful Sean Goethe, who is a regular on this program as well. Um, scoring in that game, scoring in most games that he played in, which is why we love him so much, and which is also why the City TV team have put together a wonderful documentary dedicated to Sean Goethe called Feed the Goat. Now, you can get that now. You can watch it now. Watch it after the game on City Plus, along with loads of other genuinely brilliant documentaries including one that's just going to make you cry about Sergio Aguero he made in Argentina. So you can have a little look now. And there's a wonderful offer just now. You can subscribe to City Plus now for free. So you'll get that free for 30 days. And you also get to watch the EDS games as well. And we're going to chat about the EDS in a minute because they had an incredible result last night. So get yourself subscribed to City Plus now. It's free. Watch the EDS games coming up and enjoy this documentary called Feed the Goat. I love the song, mate. It's got a lovely little beat to it. Go to! Oh! Go to turn. Go to score. I think the thing that made Sean Goethe a fun favourite was his commitment. It's a good pullback. It must be an equaliser. It's Sean Goethe. This was the game when it all sort of came together. Oh, lovely ball. Goethe! Goethe makes it five. Genuinely, he knew exactly where to be and when to be there. Nice, just pure instinct. Although Gota's got the ball here. Gota's running back and he's scored! That's amazing! Uh, and the best way I could describe it is if, if Sean went fishing, he wouldn't need a rod, the fish would jump in the net. Gota, the Narvia. Oh, wonderful Gota! Oh. Lovely ball through Berkovic. Gota's in here! And makes it 3-1! It's Sean Gota again! Maybe I'm getting old and sentimental as well, Kev, but that brings goosebumps seeing Sean go to score all those goals and the good, the celebration. He was a player, wasn't he, Kev? He, he was, and, and he was a great lad as well. He lit up the dressing room. Um, it was always fun. Always had a massive smile. And, and like I say, didn't have it easy when he first arrived. But boy, was he important. And I love him. Love him on this show as well. He never, never fails to cheer me up and make me laugh. Now, last night we had a special edition of We're Not Really Here. It was over at the Academy Stadium as our elite development squad took on Liverpool. And spoiler alert, we won. And we won with an absolutely incredible late, late goal from Felix Nemetra. If you've not seen it, get on City Plus. You need to see this goal. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it means that we consolidated our position at the top of the Premier League 2 table. Um, it was a cracking game, a cracking show, obviously, and we're not really here as well. I was totally and unbelievably jealous of Kel Spellman last night because he got Max George from The Wanted, Jolian Lescott and Neda Manua. And everyone knows Neda Manua and Jolian, obviously, brilliant. Now, we've not had Max on this show as well, so I've already said to um, to the producer, let's, let's see if Max George wants to come on this show as well. Um, but it was a great show, great panel, and a brilliant, brilliant game. Now, you, can, you need to go and watch this goal. You can get it on the club's YouTube channel. Go and get all the highlights. The EDS are doing incredible. They've only got four or five games left now to the end of the season and they are quite quite a, a few points clear now at the top of their league so do go and watch that back as well have you watched much of the EDS this this year Michael? I haven't no just little bits of it I um, need to watch it a little bit more 
you could get it on YouTube or City Plus. <laughs> let's have a look at that. We'll for 30 one. days. Yes, for free for 30 days and you won't want to leave. Um, let's have a look at that goal, though. I keep telling you how amazing it is, but let's see um, if, you, if we can have a look. Kev, this might be the first time you saw it because obviously this was late last night. So he takes well, that down. I don't know how high that in the yeah, air that was. They, I, I've seen bits and pieces of the EDS team and they got incredible talent coming through. Um, that's some touch. The first one, look, I wouldn't even got nowhere near that. I don't know how he's got even into that position. Great take and tidy little finish. Late on as well, which is always nice. It's a hamstring test of that, isn't it, Kev? Mine would have snapped, mate, yeah. <laughs> um, but look they've, they've, look, they've got incredible talent. There's no question about it. Uh, and for me, they've got to look at Phil Foden as the shining light who's, who's come through that, that pathway. Um, a local lad and, and doing wonders now and rightly so in the first team. It is a difficult pathway, a difficult journey to, to get in amongst the squad that we're seeing. But, the, but they're, seeing, they're seeing some options, aren't they? The, they're seeing yeah, there Pep is. Guardiola at times have brought them through early on in the season. We've seen lots of players get on the bench, get some minutes. And that's what's good. That's where I think now, as you said, the pathway's there. And then hopefully we'll see a few of them start to come through into the squad. Absolutely, and as I say, they are uh, doing amazingly at the top of the league there. Now, we're going to go on to... It's, I'm going to say it's back by popular demand. It's the first time I've played it, but I watched it on We're Not Really Here, and I thought, that's cracking. So, back by popular demand, your requests nearly broke the internet. It is Spin the Blue Moon, Roll the Titles. <laughs> Spin the blue moon. No expense spared here on We're Not Really is, is Here. Pe is Pep here? Or oh, no, that's cardboard <laughs> cut out. I thought you'd turn up for it. Pep yeah. was going to spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just me spinning the blue moon. It's not a wheel, it's a blue moon, Michael. It's a blue moon, You have clearly. to be really yeah. aggressive with it. You've got to really, really push hard on it. I am going to pull this blue moon. So basically, the game works by, you'll, you'll go first, Kev, I'll spin the blue moon, and we'll see what? what number it stops on, and then I'll ask you that question. And then what? the same to you, Michael, and we'll see who wins. Right. Are, you, are, you, are, you, are you excited? I am so excited. Today? This is right up there with the best moment in my career. What do you win? Um, you win the pride of this show. Brilliant. Or oh, a cream perfect. egg. I've done, I've done two quizzes. Egg. I've won one, lost one. So I need to win this, really. Right. OK, Kev, you're going to go first. I'm going to spin this. Or oh, do you want... Am I spinning it? Yes, I'll yeah. spin it. Ready? Number six, please, Nat. OK. My favourite number. This is exciting. OK. Ooh. Oh, oh. No. Number, number one. Number one. Right, here you go. You ready for this? City are set to host Leeds for a match in the Premier League for the first time since, was it 2003 or 2005? 2003. You are correct. Yes. One point to Kevin Horlock. Look, this means that was a lot. an easy question. The that tension was. in it's the only studio. Easy if you know, it. It's only easy if you know him, Brownie. We've just discussed it. You, said, you just said it in the build-up. So I didn't. I didn't. I was going to, then I corrected. But I, okay. I stopped myself saying it. No right, I'm Michael, under pressure. That's it. You're I'm under pressure, here, I'm, mate. I'm fighting a little right, bit. Right, ready. Okay, you've got five. five. If you'd have got one, would have you got the same question? I have yeah. no idea. I've genuinely no idea. <laughs> I and I was panicking while it was so spinning. What year did Manchester City? <laughs> we need to get some headphones or something, don't we? Right. Oh, this will be a good one for you because you've been talking about Rafina on the show. So he's been directly involved in 12 Premier League goals in 2021. Six whoa, whoa. goals, six he's got to come off his iPad. Hey, hey, no cheating. Only four Brazilians have registered more goal involvements in their first season. I love this question. Two of them were from City. Name them. It's easy, isn't it? Two Brazilians that have registered more goal assists. Come well, on. You've asked me with no knowledge. Oh, Come on. No. Brazilian one, City players. Must be one on the team sheet. Do you think? Have registered more what, sorry? Registered more goal involvements in their first season. In their first season. Their first season. You're not saying that. There's one that's that. really obvious. Jesus, you think? His first? Must be. Must be one of them. Is he, he could be psyching you out here, trying to get oh, you to do the wrong answer. I'm just Go saying. Well, Edison set a few up, hasn't he? Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> Uh, Are you passing? Yeah, passing. Ah, you're gonna you're gonna be gutted now. Rubinho and Alano. <laughs> I'd have got that. I knew that. <laughs> you're lucky it weren't two 0 mate. <laughs> yeah, okay, tough question. Right, Kev, you ready? How many would have knew that? Oh, wait, no, that was a bit of a rubbish spin. Hold on. Right, there we go. I'm loving this. Okay, what number is it going to stop on? 
four. Oh. This is brilliant. This is, this is working out. Okay, you ready? Yep. Excited? Nervous. It's Sergio Aguero's first Premier League game against the Whites. In with the Argentinian scoring against 32 of the 33 opponents he's faced. It, oh, wait there. If. So, Sergio Aguero has not played Leeds. He has scored against 32 of the 33 previous opponents he's faced, failing only against one other team. Is it Bolton or Swansea? So, who, who's played against but he's not scored against? Swansea. Bolton. I was going to say Bolton oh, as well. That Bolton are ruining Sergio's records. Let's right. just talk about your 50 50 questions. Wow. <laughs> that right. one of those right now. That was please. more difficult to read out than I'm, actually. I'm going to try and fix this now so it stops at three Number because that's one. the only one we've not had. There you go. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that's clever. Magic. Fantastic. The magic hands of Natalie. Okay. You get this and you draw, and then I'm going to a tiebreaker. Right. Man City boss Pep Guardiola has registered at least one win over 75 of the 77 opponents he has faced in his top flight league managerial career. That's insane. Leeds are one of the two he hasn't beaten, because, of course, we drew with them when we played them in October. Who was the other team? I'll give you an option. No. Middlesbrough or Stoke? Stoke. Is that your answer? Middlesbrough was in the... the played Middlesbrough in the Cup and won. Middlesbrough. And the answer is Middlesbrough. Oh! Mate, right. On, there's cheating going on here. Right. Tiebreaker to win. First one in. The Blue Moon. No, you're both going to get a chance. Right, Kev. The capacity of Ellen Road. Oh, can I answer it? Go on, then. Oh, exactly. You both, you both get on. to do it in the closest wins. Oh, so I've got to go yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got busy and want to go first. Go on, Oh, then. that's ridiculous. No, it's your fault, mate. You've got busy, then. 36,000. Exactly. And one. <laughs> okay, Kev. Well, so so I'm, I'm going 36,000 or 36,002. Oh, so I've just got oh that's to ridiculous. I'll go, um, <laughs> I'm being done again. 36,002. Hey, he's, 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 he's played along with yeah, the rules. No, yeah, yeah. Yep, you are Is the, that, am you, I right? No, you're not right. Well, you're the closest. I'm the winner. 37,792. Congratulations. I, was gonna, I knew that. I was going to say that, but I just wanted to, to wind Brownie up. Just go one more. Well done, Kev. Cheers, Kev. Thank that, you. Mate. Yeah. Excellent. One, two quizzes now. Buzzing. <laughs> I'm going to give you a cream egg to say congratulations <laughs> there at half time. Um, I'm disappointed, to be honest, because you played for Leeds. I feel like you should have done better. Well, I should have done better. I got it within 1,000, did, didn't do too how bad. How did you not know the Brazilians? Shows. Yeah, how, how did, did you not? know? I mean, <laughs> look at him laughing when he goes off camera there. Terrible. I'm going to say, though, everybody at home, I would have got those Brazilians. Would you have got those Brazilians as well? Uh, send us a message on social media. Let's make Michael feel rubbish about himself at half time. Use the hashtag WNRH. Let us know genuinely. Would you have got those Brazilians? Also, we want to see, as always, your picture of where you're watching the game. I love seeing your background, your scarfs up. Uh, what are you thinking ahead of today's game? How are you all feeling? Send us a message. We, we love it when you do, and we'll read out the best ones at half time. Now, we also absolutely love our junior citizens. We love you guys. The junior citizens of the match. It's brilliant. It's so good. It's now being sponsored by EA Sports because everybody loves to see it. Generally, the junior citizens have the most passion out of anyone we have on this show. I'm just, just saying, guys. And today, Today, I've already been told that is no different. So today's EA Junior Citizen of the Match is Corey. Hello everyone, my name is Corey. I'm 11 years old from the West Midlands and I am the Junior Citizen of the Match for this afternoon's game against Leeds United. Come on City, I'll get in the ball now. Corey, we absolutely love you. That singing is amazing. Um, I just want to give a really special shout out to Corey as well, because Corey has cerebral palsy, um, but that does not stop him. He was voted as the most improved swimmer in his club in 2020. He also walked down the blue carpet when he came to City, um, and that was in February 2018. He was a special guest in the EA box, and he got to see us beat Leicester 5-1 as well. And um, you also love the, the Masked Singer as well, Corey. I do. I do. I think that's a great he show. He could be on it. Yeah. For that, that singing. He was <laughs> yes. brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That was brilliant singing. So a big, big shout out to Corey there. We love you, Corey. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your beautiful singing there of Kevin De Bruyne as well. I love our junior citizens of the match. They're always so, so passionate. Now, I also love 
guess the blue. Now, another chance here for Kevin to pick up a win and for Michael to lose again. Although, I feel like Michael's got I'm revenge on the cards. On I'm getting picked on. Every time I come on now, she picks on me. It's terrible, Kev. You've got revenge on the cards now. You're going to get this one? I'll try my best. Kev, guess the blue. When you've been on before, how have you done? Got them all right. Right, he's in it. So as you know, we take a picture of a city legend, we give it a slight blur, and then we ask you and our guests to guess who it is. So let's have a little look at this week's mystery blue. And this is... Oh, okay. I'm going to say... Oh, do you know what? I'm not going to say... I, was, I, ha, I think I know who it is. I was about to say it, and I stopped myself. Yeah, I think I know who that is. And I don't know why. Yeah, I think I've got it. Okay. I think... Michael, how are you doing? Give it some thought. We won't throw our answers out just yet. We'll give it some thought. Have you got anybody in your mind? One or two. One or two? What's giving it away? Is it the shirt well, the you're looking shirt, at? Obviously, Always the shirt, obviously. Always go shirt first. Yeah. Oh, I said I have got a little bit of an unfair advantage. I've said before on previous shows, my eyes are that bad these days. I'm not, I'm not, I can actually see that picture perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone else is like that, and you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, the shirt, shirt, yeah, I think, I don't know. We'll see. Right. I think. Wow. Yeah, I think I, I, I think got, I know. I've got two guesses. Let's let's confer during the break. Right. We want to know what you're guessing. Hashtag WNRH. Send in your guests. Now let's have a look at the team news ahead of today. Just a quick recap. And this is today's team news. It is in goal Edison, and then you've got John Stones, Nathan Ake. Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, Alexander Zinchenko, Bernardo Silva, Ferran Torres, Benjamin Mendy, Fernandinho, who's the captain today, and João Cancelo. And the starting 11 for Leeds today as well. So you have Melier, Alioski, Cooper, Lorente, Aylin, Phillips, Dallas, Rafina, Roberts, Costa and Bamford. So that is your two starting 11s for today's Premier League game. Kicks off in about six minutes. So six minutes away from today's Premier League game. I'm genuinely, gents, really excited. I'm not excited to watch every City game at the minute, to be honest, because it's just, you know, it's a light in a dark time of life. But I'm particularly excited today because of obviously who we're playing. I'm expecting it to be a really exciting game. Are you? I am expecting it. I thought you'd ask me the scores, where we'd be. I think there's going to be about six or seven goals today. Do you? I've thrown Go, it out there. Give me an exact wow. score then, because I'm wondering what you're thinking now. I'll tell you what, if you get the score correct, I'm, I'm happy to pretend that you won the quiz. Brilliant. 4-2, <laughs> City. 4-2. Yeah. Okay, Kev. I, I'm, I'm with Brownie. I think Leeds are going to score. I know that sounds a little bit negative of me, but okay. I just think that with the way they're going to commit bodies forward, may see them get a goal. So I'm okay. going to go 3-1 City. And I'm going to go Sinchenko's going to get on the score sheet. <gasps> really? Okay. Is that because left foot like you? Yeah, I just think playing further forward, he, he's going to enjoy it. And I think we might see him getting a rare goal. I you think he'll cross it with his left foot or his right foot when it comes to I think those he's areas. probably got more ability than me, way more than me, so he probably would use his right. Right, you can see the players are coming out now. If you aren't watching this game live on television, the best place to get the commentary is on the Manchester City app. That's with Alice Deman. Big Blue, great coverage. That is the place to listen to the game today. We'll be right back here at half time doing our instant half time analysis, as always, hopefully talking about some City goals. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you in 45 minutes. <laughs> 